Psalm 84, verse 8 to 12. Psalm 84, verse 8 to 12. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory no good things will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amen. And on that note, I welcome you to another session of In His Presence. And as I always sow, a seed of joy in the house of the Lord. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that is the spirit of the Lord. And there are sweet expressions on each face. And I know they feel the presence of the Lord. Seven day Adventist hymn now, 626. You can join me as we sing. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Stay right here with us. 
in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall live this place yes for the Lord God is sun and shield the Lord will give grace and glory no good things would he withhold from those who walk uprightly it's so lovely it's so good it's so exciting to be in the presence of God at this point we're going to take our first song ministration and after that we'll come for a season of prayer time for us to pray. Seventh-day Adventist hymnal 671 will lead us in our prayer. Now dear Lord as we pray. Now, 
dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound may our lives be transformed by your love may our souls be at this moment let people everywhere join us now as we come to you in prayer may our lives be transformed by your love may our souls be refreshed from above at this moment let people everywhere Join us now as we come to you in prayer. Beloved, as we seek God daily, we all need to know prayer Bible verses. You know, prayer is the way in which we communicate with God. And he wants to get to know us better. Bible verses about prayer are great if you want to know how to pray. And this morning we're going to ask God to teach us how to pray. And so as we come before the Lord in prayer, let us let the Bible verses encourage our daily walk with Christ and help us experience the power of prayer. Let us pray that God helps us to experience the power of prayer. Please pray wherever you are. The Bible verses help us to understand God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, the Bible says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible helps us to understand God and to help us in our prayer life. And so let's pray. Let's pray because this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And so let's ask him, Father, help us to know how to pray. Father, guide us in your, our prayer lives. Let us look to the Lord and his strength. Let us seek his face always. 
Let us pray. Let us pray. Because he gives us an assurance in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And he says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. What an assurance. Why won't we humble ourselves before God? Why won't we seek his face and turn from our wicked ways? God is, is in his holy temple. And he tells us that you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And so God is ready to listen to us this morning. Pray that he gives you the insight. Pray that he gives us the wisdom. Pray that he gives you the knowledge to understand how to pray to him how to seek his face, how to come to him day in and day out. Job tells us, you will pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows. Beloved, let us pray. Let us continue to pray. The Bible tells us that God is love, which makes it the perfect source to learn how to love others, even those who are difficult for us too. Our world has skewed the meaning of true love, but God's word remains steadfast is a true source of knowledge on how to love. And so this morning, as we continue to pray, we're going to pray that God helps us to know and understand what love is and how to love. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8, he says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongdoing. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Love reigns supreme. Pray to God. Beloved, pray. Pray that all these that we've been made to understand what love is becomes our nature. Pray that it's your nature to be kind, not to be envious, not to boast, not to be proud, 
not to dishonor others, not to be self-seeking, not to be easily angered. Pray that you love as God loved us. Ask God to teach you how to love. Beloved, pray. Pray. Because love is doing to others as you would have them do to you. And the Bible tells us in Romans 12 verse 9 that love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. It is only God who can give us that ability to love. And so let's ask of him because he's willing and ready to give it to us today so that we can live a righteous life here on earth, living lovingly to one another. Christ Jesus told us that love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Loving God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your heart, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Beloved, let's pray. Let's continue to pray. At this juncture, if there's anything heavy on your heart, put it before the Lord in prayer. Because He's here, He's heard your voice. He knows you. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knew you even when you were in your mother's womb. Cry unto him now. Put all your supplications before him. Because on this Sabbath day, the day of creation and recreation, the day God rested and asked us to join him in his rest, God is ready to answer you. God is ready to answer your prayers. God is ready to hear your word. And so seek him right now. Ask him whatever is, is on your mind right now. Put it to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord in heaven, we thank you. We praise you, we glorify you and lift you high. You are the Alpha and the Omega who knows the end from the beginning. And so there's nothing too big for you to handle. Father, this morning, we come before thee. We want to worship you in truth and in spirit. We want to be your disciples, Father. We want to work as you've asked us to. Father, that when your call comes, we want to say, I will go. That would not be selfish, sitting on all the blessings that you've given us, sitting on all the knowledge that you've given us, that we won't go and share for others who need to know the truth. Father, help us this morning. If we don't have the power of speech, Father, grant it to us. If it's, if it's fear, Father, take it out of us. If it's shyness, Father, make us bold to send your word. Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. And let us not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, Father, but day and night let us walk according to thy will. Father, set us by the rivers of waters that will be nourished by your word. Prepare a table before us that all might see your good work. This morning, we dedicate ourselves unto you. Be with us, bless us and keep us. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. We're going to listen to our next song ministration. And after that, the voice you'll be hearing will be that of our pastor, 
Pastor Dr. Divine Ayiwo. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. We thank God for bringing us here today to worship. Let us pray. Eternal Father, grateful hearts we come with praises and thanksgiving on our lips because you've been good to us. You took us through another week and we are here. Many people have died. Many are in the hospitals. But we are here to worship. Bless us now and tabernacle with us as you promised that on Sabbaths you will come down and be with us. Be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from Psalms 23. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green patches, lead me beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul. Lead me the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou art and the staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me 
in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Beautiful Psalms written by David. David's story is a very interesting story. You see, David's father, Jesse, had his family in place. Seven sons already. A wife already. But David's mother is not the original wife. So it might be a one night stand. We don't know what it is. The woman had David and wouldn't keep David, but brought David and dumped it on his father. So David is in the house walking around and people come to visit, say, whose child is this? Your grandchild? No, my son. David is your son? This little boy, all the others are grown. It became a nuisance. Rejected by his mother, now his father has to find a way to put him someplace outside the house because his presence is disturbing the peace of the family. Men ought to be careful. So the only thing they could do is to lead this boy to become a shepherd, taking care of the family sheep in the bush. So they took him and left him there. Maybe he would die. Maybe something will happen to him because he is not wanted in the house. Some of people like that, Rejected by mother, rejected by father, rejected by other siblings, and you are alone by yourself. This sermon is for you. An outcast, a reject. Nobody wants you. Your presence is a nuisance. Yes. So David learned to depend on God from a child. He has a mother but no mother. He has a father, but no father. He has brothers, Eliab, Abinadab, all of them, but he has no body, so to speak. So he's in the wilderness with the ship. So every morning he wakes up, and as he takes care of the sheep, he knows that God is also taking care of him. The Lord. He is the shepherd of the sheep, but the Lord is his shepherd. So as the sheep will look to him to take them to where there is food and take them to where there is still water so they can drink and protect them when there's animals attacking, when it's raining, they have to get a shelter. All those, he also believes God, the Father, provides him those services. So sheep look to David, David looks to God. And he was there growing up, but he has to protect the animals. So he learned to use his sling very well and very strong and very powerful that when any animal wants to attack, he can use this, this, this swing and, and, and strike. He became very perfect in that. In his quiet moments, he sings. He plays the harp. And he'll be singing glorious songs about the goodness of God. He learned those two traits. That's all he has. Physical strength. He knows how to use the swing. And he knows how to play music. 
two talents. A lot of people want to have so many talents. I have only two. I'm a teacher and a driver. Only two talents. That's all I have. But they are well developed. You are seeing one now. The teaching part is what you see now. And when I finish, I get in my car and I drive the driving part. Two talents. How many do you have? How have you developed it? Has it blessed you so far? Did you appreciate God for the little two? Or you want more? You want the ones that people have that you can't get and you are jealous of them. No. What you need is what God has given you. What will get David to the top is these two talents. The music and the swing. Catapult, whatever you want to call it. That's all. And David grew up in the bush by himself. Nobody cares. Father don't care. Mother don't care. Brothers don't care. Only God cares. So when you feel rejected, don't worry. There is a God who cares about you. And he will make provisions at the right time. He will send you destiny helpers to help you put your foot at the right place. One day, King Saul has misbehaved so much, disobeyed God, going to Amalek, killed the Amalekites. He refused to do it. He wouldn't do what God says. God was tired of him. So what happens? He was going like he was going crazy. First Samuel 16, 14, the Bible say, But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So when the evil spirit troubles him, the, the, the whole house, the staff, they want to find a solution to it. They needed the best musician to come and play music so that the king's brains can come back to normal. And they looked and they looked and they looked and they searched and they searched. There was only one musician who qualifies. What's his name? David. What music school did he go in the wilderness? School of music in the wilderness. They found David and they brought him in. And when the evil spirit from the Lord is disturbing Saul, David will play music with his harp. The soothing music drives away the evil spirit and Saul becomes calm. One day something strange happened. The Lord decided to replace Saul with another king. So we saw that Samuel was mourning for Saul, and the Lord said, Samuel, how long would thou mourn for Saul, seeing I rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Big deal. Big occasion. God has selected a king in Jesse's household. So the prophet went to Jesse and says, I came to sacrifice unto the Lord. Bring all your sons and prepare them for I'm going to anoint one of them as a king to replace Saul. Wow! One of my sons, boys, get dressed. All the seven boys got dressed so nicely. One of them is becoming a king. You see, God, 
God never told Samuel whose name, the name of the person. No. So you just go. I will show you the person. So they came and they arrayed themselves before the, 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 the prophet. And the prophet got up. When the firstborn, Eliab, he is like me, tall, broad-chested, and, and nice, handsome looking. So he came up first, and the prophet was going to anoint him. God said, hold it, hold it. The Lord said unto Samuel, verse 7, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So the first boy missed out. Then the second came. Then the third came. Then the fourth came. The fifth came. The sixth came. The seventh came. God chose none of them. But God said he's going to choose somebody that means that somebody is not there. And that somebody is also a son of Jesse. So Mr. Jesse, the prophet turned and said, verse 11, And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all your children. A father has forgotten that he has a son. A father has forgotten that David was also one of his children. A total reject and mental blockade about this boy. So when the prophet asked him, he started thinking, oh, oh, yes, yes, there's one more. But he keeps the ship. If you are looking for somebody worthy to become a king, that boy is not the one. For he is a shepherd. The father saw a shepherd, but God saw a king. People can look at you and put a label on you and call you all kinds of names. It doesn't matter. What God says is what counts. If God said you will be something, you will be. Anybody can do anything, but nothing can stop you from achieving what God has purposed for you. God made you. God knows you. He has a plan before he brought you in. If you give your life to him, that plan will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Today you might be an outcast. Today you might be sleeping on the floor. Today you might not have a television in your house. Today you might not have a conditioning. But if God says he's going to make you big, Big you will be, and nothing of this earth can stop it. Give your life to Jesus. Trust him. Don't talk back at him. Don't live your life blaming him for what is not. Look at David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. What do you think that is? He sleeps in the bush on the green grass. You sleep on a, a, a foam, a foam, and you are still complaining. Look at him, grateful, grateful for God putting him on a green grass to sleep. Outside, not in a house. Maybe you sleep in a kiosk. Maybe you live in a house which is not really a, a, a big deal. But thank God for it. Praise God for it. Praise God for what you're going through. Why he's preparing you for something better. He's taking you through, through your wilderness. He's taking you through your green pastures. It's okay. Just endure a little more. His glory will shine on you. His blessings will fall on you. God hasn't abandoned you. Everybody could, but God, his eyes are upon you. If he watches over the sparrows, you are worth more than a sparrow. 
So they have to send for David. For the prophet said, unless he comes, we will not finish this ceremony. So they rush to the bush. Go and bring David. He didn't dress. He didn't take a bath. He didn't look groomed like a king. They just brought him from the farm like that into the place. Hoping he will be rejected. Hoping the prophet will say, no, this is not it. But it's not the prophet that was making choices. It's Jehovah God, the omnipotent one, the omniscient one, the omnipresence one, the one who is God all by himself. His power is matchless. Nothing can compare to him. He is the one who makes choices. He is the one who decides who becomes what. His power, his might, his spirit is the one that determines. So they brought David. When they brought him, everybody was looking. All his brothers, his father, his stepmother, they're all looking with hatred in their heart. Hatred. Hatred in their heart. And then all of a sudden they see that the prophet walks over to him and pours the oil on his head. Thou anointest me in the presence of my enemies. Who are the enemies? His father, his mother, his seven brothers. They are all, they are the only people in that room where David was anointed. The reject, yes. The one that is not supposed to be anything, yes. The shepherd boy, yes. God pours the oil on his head. He is the one. He is the one that is chosen by God to be king. What are his credentials? Credentials, he knows God and God knows him. That's what qualifies you. Do you know God? Do you pray enough that your voice is familiar in heaven? God knows you, but do you know him? God sees you, but do you see him? Have you talked to him this morning? Do you lay your plans, all your plans before him? Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do you acknowledge him? God wants David to become a king. Nobody knows David. Nobody knows him. He has no classmates. He has no pedigree. He has nothing. Just a good musician and a slingshot thrower. But he has to become a king. To become a king, you need to be known nationally. But instead of setting up a campaign and looking for money to, to, to run a campaign and travel all over the country, God has a different style of doing it. What broke up between the Philistines and the Israelites? Saul took his army to the battlefield. The Philistines also came. But instead of fighting blow to blow, man to man, there was this giant of a man. It's called Goliath. Goliath came stomping the ground. Says, listen, instead of all of us fighting, just choose one man. Let that one man come and fight me. And if he wins, if he beats me, all the Philistines will serve you. But if I beat him, 
You will become our servants. Good deal. Less bloodshed. Only one person will go. So for 40 days, he comes out every day to taunt Israel. But Israel is afraid. The king himself, he has lost touch with God. He is also afraid. Who will go forward? Everybody was afraid. But around the 40th day, David probably came home to his father. His father sends him. His two brothers are in the war. He said, take some food to your brothers. And then the captain of the batch and see how they're doing. So David went over there. And he heard the Philistines came out to turn the armies of Israel. Give me one man and I will fight. We will fight. If he wins, we will serve you. But if I win, you will serve us. David, look, who is this uncircumcised Philistine taunting the armies of Jehovah God? He wasn't afraid. Why? He can recollect what God has done for him in the past. He said a lion came to take a ship. He chased the lion and took the ship out of the lion's mouth. And when the lion turned around to attack him, he caught him and slew him. Wow. That boy is a superman. And a bear came, and this Philistine, I know the same God that was with me in the past, the same God will be able to fight for me, and I will win this battle. Praise Jesus. So they took him to King Saul, and he said, King Saul, I will go, and I will be that man. So what are you talking about? You little boy. You don't know anything about battle. You're not going to make it. David said, listen, I'm going to make it. I have experience with the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. And the way I protect my sheep, the same way the Lord will protect me. So all the armies of Israel heard that there is a young man called David. He is going to fight for the nation. But the king was there. The king is supposed to lead in the battle. Unknowing to all of them, this is the new anointed king of God. So the name started spreading. David, 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 David. He's going. Saul called him and put on all his armor and stuff. And David said, please. I just want to be myself. I can be you. I've not tried this coat of armor and your sword and stuff. No. I can't. I am going with God and what he has prepared me with. The slingshot. That's all I need. And God is going to do what God has to do. It's not me fighting. It's God who is fighting through me. So David went. He wouldn't wear his clothes. He went, took his sling, picked up a stone, and was getting ready. And when he saw the giant, instead of being afraid, he ran towards him with his sling in his hand. And he was rolling it, rolling it. Now the giant... Although he knew he was strong, he didn't go by himself. He had an armor bearer. So it's two against one. David didn't even think of that. He didn't bring that to his mind. He was going in the power of God and he knew victory was his. Nobody goes in the power of God and loses. So the, 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 the Goliath was kind of angry. Am I a dog? You're coming to me with stones. 
come and I will give your body to receive. David said, listen, you coming with, to me with jav javelin and swords. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And today, I'm going to kill you, cut your head off. And the man was surprised at the boldness of this little boy. I think at this point he, he lifted up his, his, his helmet because he, didn't, he couldn't understand what was going on. And at that very instant, the stone was released. The stone was released. And the stone went straight into his head and sunk inside. That was the first bullet made. It was made by God. It went into his head. And he died. That was the campaign for, for God to make David a household name. The women pick it up. Saul killed his thousand. David killed his ten thousand. David became the champion. David became preparing for the nation. God using a reject. God using a shepherd. God using his son, brighter than the sun. Everybody knew who David was from that day. God, God can do the same for you. You might feel rejected, yes. Nothing seems to work for you, yes. A girl, all your friends, people you know are getting married, you're still single, and you are struggling. Yes, God has not forgotten about you. Jehovah God who created you, he is keeping you for something special. Trust him. He never makes a mistake. God will turn your darkness into day. God will give you beauty for ashes. God will turn your darkness into light. Nothing is impossible for him. He might delay a little bit, but the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord, all he needs from you is a relationship. God wants you to put your hand in his hand so that he can lead you, so that he can be your shepherd, so that he can do for you Better than you can think for yourself. David didn't have to go to his father's house. He went to the, 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 the palace. Yes, he became the king of Israel. He became the king because God said so. God will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. My friends today, I want you to believe in this God that I'm talking about. I want you to rely on him. I want you to give your life to him. If you don't know him yet, please call the numbers on your screen so we can help you with Bible studies. We can help you get baptized. We can help you give your life to God so God can fulfill his plans in your life. God needs you. He wants you in his corner. He wants to bless you so you can be a testimony for other people to say, hey, this person who was worth nothing, look at what God has done for him. God is waiting to use you for that example. Don't delay. Yes, don't delay. Don't look at your sufferings. Don't look at what you're going through. Look at what God can do for you. Look at what he did for David, who has nobody. He has nobody. He has no money. He has no property. He lives in the bush. That's it. God can do better for you. Trust him. May his hands be upon you, even now, as you listen to him. And may he embrace you as you take a step towards him. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, your children have heard your words. Please be with that person who is struggling. Be with that person who is crying in their heart 
Because life is not what they thought it would be. Deliver them. Draw close to them. Bring them to yourself. Be their comforter. Be their strength. Disappoint them not. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, how good and pleasant it is to hear the word of God. It is food to our soul and is what quenches our thirst. Thank you, Pastor, Dr. Divine Ayivo. Beloved, if you are blessed by this word that was shared by Pastor Dr. Ayivo, and you want to give your life to Christ, it is not too late. You can do so now. And you can send a message to our WhatsApp number, or you can send us an email or a text message. If you want to be baptized as well, you can do the same by sending to our number 055-968-0000. Zero five five nine six eight zero zero six six, or to our email Hope TV Ghana. The Ghana is in full. G H A N A. Hope TV Ghana at gmail dot com. If you want further Bible studies, you can still send us a message, and we will definitely get back to you. If you also want to bless this ministry, and you want to give to God's work. You can do so by sending a donation to um, Momo number 024-919-3083. 024-919-3083. And God will richly bless you. Till we meet again next Sabbath, I say stay blessed, read your Bible, and pray every day. God bless you. If you are touched, inspired, and blessed by this message and want further Bible studies or want to be baptized, please send a WhatsApp or text message to 055 96 800 66. Alternatively, you can send an email to hopetvghana at gmail.com or call 0302-959065. God bless you and keep watching Hope Channel, your preferred Christian channel.